the Donald weighs in on the rally that's supposed to happen in Washington, D.C. over the weekend. So we'll talk just a bit about what's going on with that. And of course, what the left-wing media is trying to tell you is actually happening with this. In other news, Governor Abbott calls for a sealing of the border ports of entry in his state and then turns around almost immediately and undoes the order. So we'll go over just a bit about that. Nicki Minaj fans protest the CDC headquarters in Atlanta. And we're going to try and get around to this news story again because we missed it yesterday, but four people are found slain in an SUV in my home state. Not far from where I grew up, in fact, in what appears to be the starts of a real-life murder mystery. It's all going to be all this and more. Hey, 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 do you trust the plan yet? Especially given what's going to happen this weekend, do you trust the plan yet? I'm Jay Edgar, and this is Contemporary. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Contemporary. My name is Jay Edgar, and boy, oh boy, do we have a pretty packed stack of news waiting for you guys over here today. It's good. There's a lot. we got a lot to go over here today, and we're going to try to get through all of it, but, you know, a little bit of a late start because I overslept because I, well, I could go over everything that happened last night, but that would take up half the show in and of itself, but... We're going to go over the news instead. We'll get through all of this stuff because there's a lot to get to. Plus, <clears throat> live chat day is today. So I've got all the names from the week, including Brave Dave, <clears throat> by the way. Brave Dave, right up there. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, I looked in over at the analytics on uh, over on uh, Restream for everybody who chatted in the live chat that day. And uh, I don't know if it was just that you guys triggered Brave Dave or I triggered Brave Dave, but he had more messages on Wednesday than the rest of you combined. Just saying, the counter was up there. He, he messaged more on that day than the rest of you guys combined. So he was pretty pissed. Congratulations, you triggered a leftoid. And you let him go off until, well, he got into conspiracy stuff that doesn't fly well on YouTube and we had to give him a couple minutes to think about it. Unfortunately, he chose not to come back, but anyway. We could go over that forever too, but we gotta get into the news But before we get into any of that. Guys, I'm gonna be making a call on Monday because, well, we've gotta get it done because we are moving into that fall season and I promised you guys a website by late fall, so we gotta do what we can to get that actually moving and ready to go here. So you can go over and check out my friends who are going to be coming up in the website. We are talking about the generational gap, the daily ignoramus, the breakdown with Birkenhoff, the R.A. conservative, and the Freckles and Brit show. Um, a couple announcements on that. The daily ignoramus returns today from his one day hiatus. And I just listened to the R-rated conservative yesterday from his, I believe it was Monday show. Yeah, it was after the Met Gala. Tuesday show, I'm sorry, after the Met Gala. And for those of you who enjoy the R-rated conservative, he is no longer going to be using YouTube. He still has his channel, but he said that after he moved, he wasn't gonna be using it anymore. And he is on a hiatus now until they finally finish up the move. And they're dealing with some stuff too. I'm not going to air his dirty laundry out there. But he was very vocal about it in his show. So if you want to go check that out, go check out the channel that he's got out there. Watch the last YouTube video. He will be on Rumble. So you can go check him out over on Rumble. Plus all the other platforms. DLive, Twitch. Um, everything else like that. So you can go check him out over at that. Check out his last message. Before heading off into the move. And we wish him very well. And we hope very much that he will come back and join us once again as soon as he has landed in the Great Sunshine State. So go check them out. All right, let's get into it, shall we? Let's get the live chat up here so I can see what you guys are doing. Hey, look, that's me. Where's the chat bot? There we go. All right, let's get into it. Let's do this. Hopefully you guys leave me something spicy today for the end of the show. Oh, hey, look at that. 
My screen's got moved around again. This fucking piece of shit, seriously. Give me just a sec. We gotta do some on-air production here. There we go. Yeah, every time I shut down Streamlabs for whatever reason and I had to restart my computer last night, it jockeys the screens around that I have for all my scenes. I, I noticed that on the Trent Ortner uh, interview the other day too. All three of them were flipped around because I've got a uh, display capture for all three screens. And yeah, we'll have to we'll have to address OBS for that because it didn't used to do that. Anyway, we got to get into it here. Uh, coming in from starting with the Dow today, the Dow is at thirty four thousand seven fifty one. 32, which means that it dropped ever so slightly throughout the day yesterday, 63.07 points. And once again, it tried. The futures came up, and then it all collapsed there at the beginning of the day, and then tried again, and then started crashing down once again towards the end of the day. So, looks like there is yet another down day for the Dow. And, I mean, it's September, and statistically, it usually does poorly in September anyway, but yeah, every, just one up day so far this month, it looks like. So we will see what's going on with that. Uh, Ron Helton, that would be the R-rated conservative, is moving to the Sunshine State. He's getting out of mass. All right. Uh, let's see. Your Bitcoin. Let's give that a refresh. Your Bitcoin is at 47500 US dollars and 10 US debts. Holding steady over the last couple days here, but still off of its $44,000 low. So those of you who got it on sale, congratulations. You're already starting to make out a little bit. Uh, on your metal prices, your copper is coming down, your steel is on the way back up, and your aluminum is still on an upswing. Hold on to those cans for just a little bit more because it keeps going. Uh, all your copper wire, copper tubing, flashing copper, number two copper tubing. Uh, your insulated copper wire is up a little bit, your thin wire is up a little bit, your Romex wire is up a little bit, but most of your copper is down. Uh, brass is down as well. Uh, steel, steel box, steel BX, what is that? I don't even know what steel BX is, I'm not going to lie. Um, that's down, your light iron is up, your number one steel is up, so it looks like you've got green almost all the way across the board for steel, except for steel BX. And then the one with copper for clean aluminum copper fin is down, otherwise radiators are up, cans are up, sheet aluminum is up, and rims are down, so... Hold on to your cans, but if you got some wire, now might be the time to get rid of a little bit of that because it's on the downswing right now. All right, let's see what the investors have to say. From IBD, Dow Jones Futures, Market Rally Resilient, five stocks flash buy signals, Elon Musk's latest FSD target. From Ed Carson, Dow Jones Futures fell modestly Friday morning, along with S&P 500 Futures and NASDAQ Futures. The stock market rally retreated Thursday, but narrowly closed, mixed, holding Wednesday's rebound from key levels. A number of stocks flashed by signals Thursday. Palantir Technologies followed through Wednesday's move. Applied Materials flashed early buy points. Kai stock, the reset stock. Kai stock, Macy's, and Mosaic also made bullish, actionable moves. Um... Uh, Meanwhile, Tesla eked out a small gain, continued to trend higher in a buy zone. That's despite ARK Invest selling significant uh, Tesla stock holdings this month. Tesla CEO Elon Musk reiterated his recent call to open up FSD beta to all full self-driving customers this month. Tesla stock is on the IBD leaderboard. Macy's, Avis Budget Group, and Palantir are all on Swing Trader. On your futures, the Dow futures fell 0.2% versus fair value. S&P 500 futures and NASDAQ 100 futures lost 0.2%. Remember, overnight action in Dow futures and elsewhere doesn't necessarily translate into actual trading in the next regular stock market session. So, a little bit of move, a little bit of uh, moving and shaking going here and there. Um, not much. The full self-driving car, that's, um, that's getting to be an interesting point, though, because I don't know if that's going to be coming back. I know they've been having massive problems with the full self-driving car. I have no interest in getting something full self-driving. I know a lot of people do because they want to sit and text and do social media and whatever the fuck while they're going down the road. 
I don't trust it. I, I don't I don't care for it. I would rather just take control of where I'm going and let my cow lead me where I where I want to be. But there again, when you've got satellite technology guiding you and everything else, the government runs the satellites and if they want to shut you down for whatever reason, they will shut you down. I know we had this discussion when I was in mechanic school and we were talking about the fact that somewhere in the very near future, all cars were going to be, uh, they were going to have a remote shutdown and we were talking about this with OnStar, the fact that they could go back and shut you down on a moment's notice for anything. And most of us were agreeing that if it starts getting into that direction, we're going to start going the opposite direction, grabbing those old carbureted cars and not having to worry about whatever is on the grid. I can tune a cab. Can you? I don't know. We'll see what happens there. All right, let's grab one from CNBC, then we'll get into the rest of the news. Stock futures fall as investors brace for more volatility this September. From Maggie Fitzgerald. Stock futures were lower on Friday as investors remain cautious due to resurgent COVID virus, a Federal Reserve meeting next week, and a historical tendency for September to be a weak month for equities. Dow futures lost 82 points, S&P 500 futures shed 0.3%, and NASDAQ 100 futures lost 0.2%. History is not on the market side, with the S&P 500 averaging a 0.4% decline for September, the worst day of any month according to Stock Traders Almanac. Friday in particular begins a historically weak period for stocks as those September losses typically come on the back half of the month. Holy shit, I can hear myself. <clears throat> you can tell I listened to the I Rated Conservative yesterday. Um... Let me get out of that accent. I didn't even realize I was doing it. We expect volatility to increase over the next month, driven by a seasonal pickup in investor uncertainty, a continued virus uncertainty, and significant monetary and fiscal policy catalysts, wrote John Marshall, head of derivatives research for Goldman Sachs, in a note on Friday. Marshall cited data showing S&P 500 volatility, typically increased by 27% from August to October. Still, stocks are heading into Friday with modest gains for the week. The Dow is up 0.41% and the S&P 500 is up 0.34% since Monday. The Nasdaq Composite has gained 0.44% this week. For the month, stocks are in the red. The Dow is down 1.7% in September. The S&P 500 is off by 1.1% this month, but still just 1.6% from its all-time high. The Nasdaq has lost a half percent this month. On Thursday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 63 points after being down as much as 274. At its low, the S&P 500 fell 0.16%. The Nasdaq Composite was the outperformer, rising 0.13% as Netflix, Microsoft, and Amazon all closed in the green. The Census Bureau reported Thursday that August retail sales increased 0.7% for the month against the Dow Jones estimate of a decline of 0.8%. However, the retail sales beat came after the initial estimate for July was revised down sharply from a month over month gain of a half percent to decline 1.8 percent. A separate economic report showed that weekly jobless claims increased to 332,000 for the week ending September 11th. According to the Labor Department, the Dow Jones estimate was 320,000. The economy is widely thought to be slowing down under the weight of the Delta variant. Yeah, yeah, they tried to get rid of the Delta variant, but <clears throat> it came back. It came back. Combined with bad historic September stock market seasonality and ongoing fears of inflation has caused investors to recently turn cautious, said Jim Paulson, chief investment strategist for Luthold Group. With economic growth unexpectedly reviving again, investors are questioning whether they have been too cautious, keeping a bid under the overall stock market. The Federal Reserve meets for two days next week on Wednesday and is expected to give further clues as to when it may start to slow its $120 billion in monthly bond purchases that have supported the recovery, but also perhaps aided a jump in inflation. No way! We've had 5% month over month since Biden took office? And, and you're thinking maybe the Fed helped that along? Fed Chief Jerome Powell said the so-called tapering could occur this year, but investors are waiting for more specifics. 
Some investors fear a decline in asset prices as the central bank begins to take away its easy policies. So, yeah, it looks like we have inflation worries that are coming up with this, along with the, the Delta variant. Oh my god, panic everybody! The Delta variant is going to kill us all! And volatility, volatility, volatility. So we will see what happens with that as we move along. Let's get out of this. Let's get into the big news of the day. And we are going to start today from Insider. So, as most of you know, fellow extremists, tomorrow is the day of the rally, which means that we must all run over and support the people who were jailed politically by, by people who stand against our great and glorious orange overlord. We must go out there and support... Even Trump has come out against this at this point. This is from Insider. Trump thinks the September 18th rally in support of Capitol riot suspects is a setup designed to make him look bad, report says. From Tom Porter. By the way, is the uh, is the music volume too loud for you guys? I, I gotta ask that there. Uh, they they completely changed the Pretzel Rocks home screen, which it used to have a vertical bar, and now it's got a horizontal bar, and it's uh, like half the size, so I can't tell what the appropriate level is based on the metrics that I used to have. So if it's too loud, I can kick it back just a little bit more. I think I'm gonna kick it back just a touch more. Because it's loud in my ears right now. All right, this is from Tom Porter. Former President Trump is staying away from the September 18th Washington, D.C. rally in support of Capitol riot suspects because he thinks it's a setup to damage his reputation, sources told the New York Times, a former newspaper. Trump has in the past spoken in support of his fans who attacked the U.S. Capitol on January 6th in a bid to stop Joe Biden's uh, certification as president. But sources told the Times that he wasn't going anywhere near Washington on Saturday and would instead spend the day at his golf resort in Bedminster. Mr. Trump used the planned protest as a setup that the news media will use against him regardless of the outcome, the Times said, citing people familiar with his uh, thinking. That's got to be a scary job to have. I am familiar with Donald Trump's thinking. Jesus Christ, that guy must smoke. <clears throat> the Saturday rally was organized by Matt Brainerd, a former data official for the Trump campaign, is being held in support of those who have been jailed or have faced other punishments in relation to the Capitol riot. Earlier this week, Brainerd said attendees would not be allowed to wear clothing in support of Trump or Biden, adding that the event was not about the election or candidates. Trump is the only Republican keeping his distance. Representatives Marjorie Taylor Greene and Madison Cawthorn, who were scheduled to speak at the event, both canceled their appearances, Politico reported. The event had raised fears of a repeat of the violence on January 6th with intelligent Hong Kong officials saying that several far-right groups, such as the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers, were expected to attend. Really? I'm to the understanding the Proud Boys told their people to stay the fuck away too. And I think the Oath Keepers glow. Well, I think the Proud Boys glow too, but I think they're smart enough to, to keep people away from this. Amid the security current, uh, concerns, police officers have re-erected a security fence around the perimeter of the Capitol that was originally put there in the wake of the Capitol Selfie Fest. Trump appears not to be the only one concerned that the event was a setup, with NBC News reporting on Wednesday that hardline Trump supporters and right-wing extremists on social media were riddled with paranoia that the event could be a decoy used to entrap them. The Department of Homeland Security said about 700 people were expected to attend the event. It is a trap. And you can read it in some of the subtext here. We're going to read from The Guardian as well, which is a far le uh, left publication. We're going to read from them as well. But, I mean, just look at the subtext that even Insider, who is a middle-of-the-road publication, which it's not, and I mean... We read Insider almost every day. We know that they're pretty far to the left, too, at this point. It's it's center. Ground News told me it was center. It, it's not center. But look at the language. Trump appears not to be the only one concerned that the event was a setup. Hardline Trump supporters and right-wing extremists are riddled with paranoia that the event could be used as a decoy to trap them. They're, they're just being paranoid. Make sure you get there, you guys. Make sure you get there. Look at the... Yeah, Read between the lines on some of this shit. And it gets worse the further left you go. But also, I mean, look at what's happening here. 
They're putting the fence back up. They're preparing for this. If they're preparing for this, that means that they've got the National Guard out there. That means they've got every police officer out there with guns, ready to go and execute the mean people who, who the, they want to be patriots too, just like the guy from, from NBC News. We want to be heroes to the left because we're sick of being, we're, we're sick of being painted as villains because we wear the badge. We want to be heroes too. And I bet you there is a sentiment out there, people. Maybe not in the mainstream, but I'm sure that there are extremists in the Capitol Police Department who are with who have an itchy trigger finger that said, I'm gonna go shoot me, a Trump supporter, and then I'm going to be a hero to the left. I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure they're in the minority, but I'm sure they're out there. But yeah, I mean, they're coming out here. They're calling it paranoia. They, you know, Trump thinks it's a setup to damage his reputation. Because he's a paranoid idiot. I mean, do what you want to do. And I've said this. You know, I, I say the same thing with the vaccine. If, In my opinion, if you go to this, I think you're stupid. I think you're dumb, to be completely honest. And you're probably going to die if not get arrested and taken away from your family, your livelihood, and everything else. If they're going to turn out in these many numbers, and I've seen other people too that are trying to discredit this over on Twitter, say, well, and these people glow as well. Well, what, what, why is it right that that the left can go out and occupy the Capitol and protest there, but, but the right, we can't go occupy the Capitol? That's a fair point, and I understand that. Here's the problem with this. If you're going to take the protest and the fight to the federal government, and you have been already branded as enemies of the state by the government, go and protest in your local capital. Like I said, and I said this a couple days ago when we talked about this. Go and protest in Tallahassee, in Madison, in Boston. Eh, maybe don't do it in Boston. Maybe don't do that. But, I mean, Sacramento, if you're that, if you feel that strongly about it. Um, Portland, if you feel that strongly about it. That might not be the best idea either, but it's still going to be a better idea than going right down to the U.S. Capitol where the National Guard is. And it's the same thing when I when people go online and say, Oh, well, uh, you think your little pew pew is going to stand up to the government? No, I don't. Because I'm not going to bring the fight to them. If I have to stand up to the government, they have to bring that fight right to my door. If they think that they want to do something bad to me, they have to bring that fight to my door and do it on my terms, on my turf. I'm not going to do it on their terms, on their turf. Which is why, and I think the January 6th one, that was a setup too. I think there were plenty of people in that crowd that were looking to go and pull Trump supporters up off so they get a felony conviction and can't vote anymore. I don't think it. I don't think they were setting that one up to kill people. I think they were setting that up to get more felony convictions and pull more uh, Trump voters off the rolls. If you want my complete and honest opinion about this, and I really think that's what's happening here too. I don't think that any of this is legitimate, and honestly, I don't think Brainerd is trustworthy. Anytime you bring the fight to the government, especially when it's the federal government, there is going to be an ulterior motive, especially if it's widely known on social media. This whole thing glows, it glows in the dark, and The Guardian makes it even more pertinent on all this. So let's read from The Guardian. Far-right groups, far-right groups, tell supporters planned Washington rallies a government trap. Oh no, you better not listen to these far-right, you, you better get there because otherwise you're going to be associated with these far-right groups. Um, it looks like, oh, we have an author given here, Lois Beckett. Extremist groups and prominent right-wing figures are warning supporters not to attend the far-right rally in support of the people arrested for participating in the January 6th Capitol Selfie Fest, calling the event a false flag and a trap. Capitol Police are bracing for potential violence at the Justice for J6 protest rally, which is taking place in D.C. on Saturday, and security fencing has gone up once more around the Capitol building. But local and federal officials have also said they expect no more than 700 people to attend the protest. Oh, 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 no more than 700. Oh, oh, yes, no. 
a far cry from the estimated tens of thousands of supporters of Trump who converged on the Capitol in January. Across white, uh, right-wing social media platforms, most people who are talking about the event in any capacity are telling people to steer clear of D.C., Cassie Miller, a senior research analyst at the SPLC, said. Any extremist group that's talking about it is warning people against attending. The common narrative in the right-wing forums is that the rally is a trap that's been set by federal authorities that will leave participants vulnerable to surveillance and arrest, Miller said. While intelligence officials reportedly warned in early September that the Proud Boys and Oath Keepers were planning to attend the rally, both groups, whose members are facing some of the most serious charges in the 6th January attack, have since distanced themselves from the event. A Proud Boys social media channel posted Sounds Like Bait and wrote, We aren't going and you shouldn't either. In an interview on his way to jail, the group's chairman, Enrique Tario, said the Proud Boys will not be there, WUSA 9 reported. I do not know of any specific plan to attend other than what we are watching the media fabricate. Kelly Sorrell, a lawyer for the Oath Keepers, told Mother Jones. <clears throat> Fox News host Laura Ingram called the rally stupid and told her viewers that she had never heard of it before she saw a report about it on CNN. Many people see the protests as even a false flag operation, Ingram warned the, uh, on 10 September. Have any big-name conservatives signed on? Of course not. Of course, obviously, there's nothing legitimate about it. Even a Facebook discussion hosted by the group organizing Saturday's rally features comments like, this will end badly, and it isn't us if anything goes down. Some prominent Republican members of Congress who have defended the Capitol rioters as political prisoners, including Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is a plant at Madison Cawthorn, told Politico this week, before the protest, that they would not be attending. Yeah, I, I think Madison Cawthorn, he's got problems too. Donald Trump himself used the Justice for J6 rally as a setup and has made no public comments about it. No, he did yesterday. The New York Times, a former newspaper, reported. <coughs> I don't know a single person in the MAGA movement who's going, the longtime Trump ally, Roger Stone, one of the defendants in a new lawsuit brought by seven Capitol Police officers against people they allege helped send a violent mob to the Capitol to attack them, told RT, the Russian state-funded television channel, Patriots, stay away from Washington, Stone added. Sunday's, uh, Saturday's Justice for J6 rally is being organized by Look Ahead America, a group run by Matt Brainerd, who was briefly employed by Trump's 2016 presidential campaign as the director of data and strategy before being let go, BuzzFeed News reported in August. So, you have The Guardian telling us, it's only extremists that think this is a trap. You have most prominent conservatives telling people to stay as far away from this as they can, and you have the whole thing organized by Matt Brainerd, who was fired by the Trump campaign. Do you see it yet? Do you see it? So, stay away. Stay far, far away. All right. Let's listen to Tucker for just a brief bit here, shall we? No, go away. This happened for months. He's on the border right now. We're happy to have him. Hey, Bill. Hey, Tucker. Good evening to you. So, look, for the past several months now, we've heard the Biden administration claim that progress, extreme progress, has been made down here at the border, but that's just not squaring up with what we're seeing on the ground. We want to show you this remarkable drone video we shot today with our crew up in Del Rio. Take a look at this staggering footage. What you're looking at here is the International Bridge in Del Rio. We first showed this to you last night. Well, it has gotten significantly worse. What you're looking at is sources are telling me upwards of 10 thousand migrants waiting underneath that bridge right now after they crossed illegally into the United States. Why are they waiting there? Well, what I'm being told is Border Patrol holding facilities in the area are completely over capacity and Border Patrol agents are completely overwhelmed 
there's just nowhere for these people to go right now. They're free to go. They're not being detained right now. They're just kind of holding themselves under this bridge, waiting to be apprehended by Border Patrol. As you mentioned, Border Patrol sources are telling me most of these migrants are coming in from Haiti. There are also some from Cuba and Venezuela as well. But this is just a horrible situation down there, and our border agents need a lot of help. Consider yesterday morning, there were only 4,000 migrants under that bridge. Now I'm told it's well over 10,000. So in a span of just over 24 hours, those numbers have doubled. So that's uh, that's quite the pan out that they have there of what uh, of what we see going on down there at the border. That's uh, I mean that's not good news, but we will see what's going on with that. Uh, let's back up here. Come on, there we go. So we've got a few things that are going on with the border right now. has watched. Biden's FAA places temporary ban on drones flying over bridge packed with illegal immigrants. This is from Andrew Mark Miller and Bill Malukin. The Federal Aviation Administration has placed a two-week flight restriction along a bridge at the southern border inundated with thousands of Ill Ill illegal immigrants, which prevents reporters from flying drones to document the crisis. We have learned that the FAA just implemented a two-week TFR over the International Bridge in Del Rio, meaning we can no longer fly our uh, Fox drone over it to show images of the thousands of migrants. FAA says special security reason. Fox News reporter Bill Malukin tweeted Thursday evening. And there's the tweet, there's the pictures. New, we've learned that the FAA just implemented a two-week, meaning we can no longer fly our Fox drone. Uh, I don't need to repeat what I just said up here. Malugan added that Fox News has been using drones for months and there's never been an issue. We reached out to the FAA to ask for clarification on why the TFR was implemented. Malugan tweeted, We haven't heard back yet. We will update if we do. The Border Patrol requested the temporary flight restriction. Due to drones interfering with law enforcement flights at the border, the FAA has said in a statement on Thursday evening, as with any temporary flight restriction, media is able to call the FAA to make requests to operate in the area. Over 8,000 migrants are currently waiting underneath the International Bridge in Del Rio, waiting to be apprehended and processed after crossing into the U.S. illegally. Sources tell Fox News the situation is out of control and the Border Patrol is overwhelmed. Oh, we got some more video. Let's watch some more video, shall we? Law enforcement sources on the ground at the bridge this morning just sent me this video showing the situation there. I'm told a large majority of the migrants are Haitians and more are crossing into the U.S. and arriving at the bridge by the minute. BP with uh, limited manpower. That is a bunch of people. And, you know, like they said in the video that uh, we watched just a second ago, right before this, I mean, these people, they have nowhere to go. And they're just standing there waiting to be arrested. And this, I mean, to me, that's a big fuck you. Like, hey, we came into your country and there's nothing you can do about it to, to make us go away. So we're just going to stand here and watch you while you come out here and process us so we can come in and get into your court system and clog up your fucking court system. This is a gigantic middle finger to the American people. Not necessarily the, the government, because it looks like the government's allowing this, but this is a big middle finger to the American people. Why doesn't Instagram work anymore? I have no idea. I will have to go look at that and see if there's an update or something I'm doing wrong with my uh, with my settings. But yeah, just keep shutting down just uh, a few minutes into the stream. So sorry guys who liked my Instagram videos, but um, I guess we'll see if we can get that fixed. Meanwhile, law enforcement source said a large majority of the migrants are Haitians and are more are arriving at the bridge by the minute. It is the latest scene of chaos at the border, as the Biden admin continues to struggle to handle a continued and relentless migrant surge, which has overwhelmed authorities and led Republican claims that the administration's immigration policies are to blame. The FAA's decision to ban drones from flying earned immediate criticism from conservatives on social media, including from Tom Cotton. 
What a coincidence, Tom uh, tweeted. The FAA better be ready to explain to Congress why they're suddenly blocking the media from covering Biden's border crisis. Ooh, 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 ooh. Pick me, pick me. I know, I know, I know. You guys all know too. You know why they're doing this. You know what they're doing here. In fact, we can go to the Daily Wire and they can tell us as well. Biden admin moves to shut down drones on southern border as they reveal his crisis to the world. From Ryan Saavedra. I'm going to go out on a limb and just say this is an op-ed, just because of the language. But let's keep going here. Uh, the Biden admin moved to shut down drones flying in an area along the U.S. southern border, where the admin has thousands upon thousands of migrants being held under an overpass. We have learned that the FAA just implemented a two-week temporary flight restriction over the International Bridge. Bill Maluga tweeted, we read most of this already, Fox News has been covering the border nonstop for almost seven months now. We use drone constantly, and it's never been an issue, Maluga said, later adding that the FAA sent a statement. The Border Patrol requested the temporary flight restrictions due to drones interfering with law enforcement flights at the border. As with any temporary flight restriction, media is able to call the FAA to make requests to operate in the area. Let's listen. We want to point out something. We've been using our drone to show everybody these remarkable pictures. You can see the video we got on the ground from some sources who are leaking stuff to us as well. Um, we just learned that the FAA has put out a temporary flight restriction, a TFR, in the area immediately around the port of entry where that bridge is. What does that mean? It means our drone can no longer fly and show those images. It's a two-week TFR, and according to the FAA, it's for special security reasons. We've reached out to the FAA to get a little clarification on what the heck that means. The timing on this, the location a little bit curious. I just want to point out, Fox News has been at the border for the better part of seven months now. We've been using the drone the entire time. It's never been an issue. All of a sudden, the last 24 hours, we start showing these images at this bridge and a TFR goes up. We can no longer fly. When we get an update from the FAA, we'll be sure to let you know. But unfortunately for those agents on the ground, they're completely overwhelmed. They need some serious help right now, and hopefully they get it from the federal government. We'll send it back to you. Mm. That's the first time hearing of this, Bill. I sincerely, and I haven't talked to lawyers, but I sincerely hope our company will ignore the FAA. They have no right to shut down news gathering. They don't. Well, see, when you ignore the FAA, you have a, uh, a distinct possibility of, you know, having that expensive drone have a 45 bullet through it. Just warning you. I'm not saying don't do it. I mean, you, obviously, you're reporters. You should do whatever you can to get the right story. But just keep in mind that the government has the monopoly in force, and they will, will use it. And those drones, I understand, are not cheap. Do whatever it is that you need to do, though. And yeah, I mean, I, of course, I, I can see something like this. Because the, the Biden admin has been trying to hide the border since, well, the beginning. And we've seen all kinds of other tactics that have come up and, you know, tried to push people into, oh, well, hey, look over here at Afghanistan. Look at the budget reconciliation bill. Hey, look at what's happening in California with the recall. Hey, look at what they what they did. Look at what this congressman in Montana did. Just look at everything but the border. And then to actually see footage about this on top of it. Yeah, I can see why they would want to why they would want to shut this down. Can't you? All right, speaking on the border, we got a lot of border stuff today. Uh, Greg Abbott orders border ports of entry shut down, but the federal government says there's no such plan. Uh, this is from the Texas Tribune and KENS5.com staff. Governor Greg Abbott said Thursday that he's directed the state troopers and the National Guard to shut down six points of entry along the southern border at the request of U.S. Customs and Border Protection. But a CBP spokesman said to the federal government, which operates the ports of entry at the U.S.-Mexico border, has no plans to shut down any ports of entry. I have directed the uh, Department of Public Safety and the Texas National Guard to surge personnel and vehicles to shut down six points of entry along the southern border to stop these migrant caravans from overrunning our state. Abbott said in an email statement, the border crisis is so dire that the U.S. Customs and Border Protection is requesting our help as their agents are overwhelmed by the chaos. 
Renee Ease, Abbott spokesperson, added that the state is shutting down the ports of entry at the request and the collaboration with CBP. Dennis Smith, the CBP spokesman, said the agency has received no directive from the federal government to shut down the ports of entry. I couldn't comment on anything the governor said. I don't have any information on that, Smith said. The Department of Public Safety didn't respond to a request for comment about Abbott's directive. Abbott's announcement comes as thousands of asylum-seeking migrants, most of them from Haiti, are waiting under an international bridge in Del Rio to be processed and enter the country, according to Val Verde County Sheriff Frank, uh, Joe Frank Martinez. Though Del Rio has seen a sharp rise in migrant apprehensions this year, the sheriff said people have been waiting, arriving in unusually high numbers in recent days. On Saturday, he said there were 2,500 migrants waiting under a port bridge. By Thursday evening, that number had grown to about 8,400, he said. Martinez estimated about 70% of the migrants were from Haiti, which has been struck by two recent tragedies, the assassination of the country's president in July, followed by a 7.2 magnitude earthquake in August that destroyed thousands of homes. The migrants seeking to turn themselves in are being sent to wait under a bridge and are given a ticket to mark their turn to be processed, Martinez said. Border Patrol is overwhelmed, he said. They just can't process them fast enough, so there's a backlog of these individuals underneath the bridge. They're not detained, they're just gathering there, waiting their turn to get processed. In August, federal agents recorded 5,196 encounters with Haitians in the Del Rio sector, a 25% increase from the previous month, according to the latest U.S. Customs and Border Protection statistics. Yeah, they're just waiting there. And how many of them are, are, are just going to stay waiting there? Or how many of them are just going to flood in? Because, I mean, there's, there's nothing holding them. There's a fence. You go around the fence. You can't really build the fence that big, that long, in that short of amount of time. Really, you fucker? Filthy conditions, lack of base. Shut up, you. So, if... And wasn't there the Remain in Mexico policy on top of all this? Is that not supposed to be? But I'm sure that so many of these people are here with their kids. Their kids. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second too because Title 42 got shut down as well. But yeah, there's so much going on here right now. And our border czar is once again nowhere to be found. All right, let's keep going. Uh, from KXAN, Governor Abbott reverses call for shutdown of six border entry points, blames the Biden admin. From Maggie Glynn. On Thursday, Governor Abbott ordered the Texas Department of Public Safety and the Texas National Guard to assist in shutting down six points of entry along the southern border, his office confirmed. The, the sheer negligence of the Biden admin to do their job and secure the border is appalling. I've directed the Department of Public Safety and the Texas National Guard to surge personnel and vehicles to shut down six points of entry along the southern border to stop these caravans from overrunning our state, Governor Abbott originally said in a statement. The border crisis is so dire that the U.S. Customs and Border Protection is requesting our help as their agents are overwhelmed by the chaos. Unlike President Biden, the state of Texas remains committed to securing our border and protecting Americans, the statement continued. Abbott's office issued another statement later on Thursday after it says the Biden admin reversed the government nurse decision to close points of entry. Six hours after the U.S. Customs and Border Protection requested the help from Texas to close ports of entry and secure the border, the Biden admin has now flip-flopped to a different strategy that abandons border security and instead makes it easier for people to cross illegally and for cartels to exploit the border. Abbott's office said the Biden admin is in complete disarray and is handling the border crisis as badly as the evacuation from Afghanistan. The new statement went on to say Abbott has directed the Texas DPS, the Texas National Guard, and instead maintained their presence at or around ports of entry to deter crossings. The Department of Homeland Security is not seeking assistance from the state of Texas to shut down the ports of entry. It would be a violation of federal law for the Texas National Guard to unilaterally do so, a Department of Homeland Security spokesperson said. Earlier Thursday, during the first week of Operation Lone Star briefing with Texas Department of Public Safety, Chris Olivares said, before I came here today, my last instructions are, we're going to shut down all POEs in Del Rio. That is the plan as of now. 
The migrants are coming to POEs, so we're going to link up with our partners and we're going to shut down those POEs. We're going to make it difficult for anyone to come across Olivares explained. Earlier this summer, the governor directed state troopers to arrest migrants for criminally trespassing. So, yeah, he came back out. He reversed this. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with this. I can't believe that the state can't take precedence over something like this. I can't. Now, I understand that constitutionally, we might be at a difficult position because when the Constitution was drafted, all the states on the border of the United States bordered U.S. territory. They didn't border a foreign country. They bordered U.S. territory. Maybe Maine, but I don't know what was going on with Canada at the time either. So, yeah, I mean, for the most part, it was all U.S. territory. So it was basically, you, were, you, you left Georgia and you went into whatever the next territory was over there. But now, now we actually have big borders that border on with sovereign countries, and I don't know what the answer is. I would like to see the states take a more active role in this, but I don't know if they constitutionally can. That's a question to go to the courts and see if that's still constitutional or not. By the Supremacy Clause, it should. The Texas National Guard should take precedent over the United States for securing Texas. But I'm sure the federal government will find some convoluted way to keep this in the hands of the federal government. Do we, do we have an issue going on here? Oh, no. It was another, what do we become famous, but... All right, let's keep going. From Politico, Biden blocked from expelling migrant families using Title 42. From Sabrina Rodriguez, a federal judge on Thursday blocked the Biden admin from continuing to use a Trump-era public health order to expel migrant families arriving at the U.S. southern border. In a 58-page ruling, U.S. District Court Emmett Sullivan found that the Title 42 policy does not authorize the expulsion of migrants and in turn does not allow for those removed to be denied the opportunity to seek asylum in the U.S. The judge's order will go into effect in 14 days. The ruling is a major victory for the ACLU, human rights organizations, immigrant advocates, and asylum seekers who have long argued that the use of Title 42 is unlawful, inhumane, and not justified by public health. The ACLU led the legal challenge, pressing for Biden officials to stop using the public health authority to expel migrant families. Oof. Oof, Arvold. Oh. Oh. President Biden should have ended his cruel and lawless policy long ago, and the court was correct to reject it today, said Omar Jadwat, director of the ACLU's Immigrants' Rights Project. For months, the ACLU has put on hold its lawsuit in order to negotiate with the Biden admin, but early last month these talks fell apart, and the CDC and Prevention up issued an updated order that maintained there's still a public health justification for the Biden admin to continue kicking out migrants. The order can remain in effect indefinitely. Excuse me. Sullivan's order only applies to families, meaning Biden admin can continue to expel single adults arriving in the U.S. southern border. Un uh, unaccompanied children have been exempt from the expelling using Title 42. In August, U.S. border agents apprehended more than 86,000 families at the U.S.-Mexico border. According to the latest CBP figures of those, more than 16,200 families, about 19% were expelled using the Title 42 order. In recent months, Mexico has been increasing the resistance of accept, uh, accepting families expelled from the U.S. under Title 42, resulting in a majority of families entering the U.S. to be permitted to remain in the country. Meanwhile, the Biden admin is in talks with Mexico about potentially restarting a version of the Remain in Mexico policy. No, they have to. It comes after the Supreme Court issued an order last month effectively forcing Biden to restore the policy. So yeah, and that's the next question I have is what happens to the Remain in Mexico policy in that situation? Does that just go away too because Title 42 is gone? I, I have a lot of questions about this. How many of these people are legitimately seeking asylum? There are 48,000 families that have shown up to the border in a month. That's over 100,000 people. Easy.
That's setting records as the number of people that are coming here. Why? Why are we setting records like this? All right. Uh, let's talk from CNN. Biden admin moves to avoid shortages of COVID-19 monoclonal antibody treatments. From Arlette Sainz. The U.S. government is buying more doses of monoclonal antibody treatment for COVID-19, and the Biden admin is taking over the distribution to avoid shortages of the key therapeutics. The move comes as demand for the monoclonal antibodies has increased as cases surged due to the spread of Delta variant and low vaccination rates in some areas of the country. Monoclonal antibodies are lab-engineered immune system proteins that kickstart an immune response against an infection. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says that as of September 10th, 2.17 million doses of the monoclonal antibodies have been shipped to all sites and 9,308, uh, I'm sorry, 938,000 doses have been used since December of, uh, so there, wow, I can't read this morning. Since December, about 43% of the distributed doses have been used as of September 3rd. An HHS spokesperson said that seven states have accounted for 70% of the orders for the therapy. These seven states are Florida, Texas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, and Louisiana. Given this reality, we... We must work to ensure that our supply of these life-saving therapies remains available for all states and territories, not just some, the HHS spokesperson said. The distribution, which is similar to a system employed earlier this year, will fall to HHS, which will allocate product to states and territories each week rather than administration sites ordering them directly. HHS will determine the amount of product each state and territory receives on a weekly basis. State and territorial health departments will subsequently identify states that will receive product and how much, the spokesperson said. The system will help maintain equitable distribution, both geographically and temp uh, temporally, across the country, providing states and territories with consistent, fairly distributed supply over the coming weeks. Why? Why does the government have to get involved in the distribution of all this? Why, why does the government have to do any of this? Why is the government getting involved in any of this at all? Other than, all I can see is they want to try and keep some of this away from some of these states. Because it doesn't seem like there's a supply issue anywhere. They're ordering 70% of the supply in these states, but they, the factories just keep pumping this shit out. So why does it now all have to go through the federal government? It's the same as any other government program. Why, why is it healthcare? Why, why does the government have to come in and take your charity? and give it away to people who are starving and hungry. Why does the government have to be involved in that? Do you see it yet? The nationalization of this? The distribution? The, the way this gets done up and nationalized? If you really want to help, suspend the patent for this monoclonal treatment and let generics rise up in its place. So that more factories are making more of the stuff. If you're really worried about supply, let the generics get their hands on it. I'm sure that the generic drug companies would love to come in here and create more of this to buffer the supply of the, of the stuff in the country. But I'm also being, I, I mean, it's also coming out to me that I, I'm, t I'm told that nothing works on this except for the vaccine. That's what they're telling me from the news media that I shouldn't have to worry about monoclonal Regeneron. That I should just trust the vaccine and trust the science and trust the Fauci. Don't worry about taking Ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine or taking the Regeneron or anything else. Just take the vaccine, that's what they tell me. Nothing else works, it's just the vaccine. So why are they buying so much of this, this stuff? Holy shit, Ron Helton is off Trovo. Let the spice flow. Ron Helton is communicating with everybody else. Yes. Let that spice go. You'll love to see it. On Wednesday, Eli Lilly and Company announced the U.S. government purchased 388,000 doses of its COVID-19 monoclonal antibody treatment Atesev Vimav to complement previously purchased doses of its Bamlan Ivimav monoclonal antibody. 
About 200,000 doses are expected to ship in the third quarter of 2021, and the remaining will ship in the fourth quarter, the company said. So, and that's just it. The government's getting in the way once again. But Mr. DeSantis decides that he is pissed about this. So he'll get out the pen and the phone and do something by executive order. DeSantis opens a new war with Biden over COVID treatments. From Arik Sarkeesian. First came masks, then came a feud over vaccine mandates. Now a new front has opened in the COVID-19 battle between President Biden and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Antibody treatments. On Thursday, DeSantis ripped into Biden's plan to distribute doses of monoclonal antibody treatments to states across the nation. Florida and six other southern states have relied on the therapies to treat patients infected by the virus, but also took up 70% of the orders in early September. That lopsidedness prompted the Biden admin to start redistributing more than 150,000 doses made available this week and provoked DeSantis to attack the president for taking therapies away from Florida, uh, Floridians. We've been handed a major curveball here with a really huge cut from HHS and the Biden admin, DeSantis said at a press conference at Broward County. We're going to make sure that we leave no stone unturned. Whoever needs a treatment, we're going to work like hell to get them the treatment. He added that Florida is being punished for peddling the COVID-19 antibody treatment before the White House, while the highly transmissible Delta variant began spreading in the southern states like Florida, Texas, or Louisiana. I, I, I think we have averted this country, in this country a lot of people going to the hospital, DeSantis said. I think it would have saved a lot of lives. DeSantis has prioritized monoclonal treatments such as Regeneron in his Florida pandemic battle plan, spending the past several weeks flying across the state supporting the treatments. Monoclonal antibody treatments are considered effective and administered in early in infection. At the same time, he has opposed COVID-related restrictions, such as requiring students to wear face coverings, vaccine passports, or mandatory vaccine mandates for workers that has put him repeatedly at odds with the Biden admin. DeSantis' opposition to COVID mandates has raised his profile with conservatives across the nation, cheering him as he prepares to run for re-election and possibly challenging Biden in 2024. But the summer surge in Florida, Delta variant cases pose a threat to DeSantis' electoral ambitions, with the governor's approval ratings dropping as the state broke grim COVID milestones, such as hospitalizations and new infections almost weekly. But what about deaths? Press Secretary Jen Psaki on Thursday defended Biden's plan to cut Florida's allotment of the antibody treatments, saying the admin is increasing the distribution of antibody treatments in September by 50%, but she also warned that the supply isn't unlimited. Our role as the government is to circle back and to answer your questions once we have the narrative crafted. And it's also to be equitable in how we distribute, she said during a press briefing. We're, we're, we're going to circle back and we're going to give greater percentage to Florida over Oklahoma. Federal records show that Florida is due to receive 27,850 doses of Regeneron this week, which is still the most in the country. It's down from the state's weekly average of 72,000, according to DeSantis' office. Florida and the other six states that were receiving 70% of the federal supply are now re receiving more than 55%, while the rest are shared among the other states, districts, and territories, including Oklahoma, which will receive 2,840 doses. But Biden's plan didn't sit well with Florida's Republicans beyond DeSantis. GOP Senator Mark Rub uh, Marco Rubio on Thursday took to Twitter and condemned the White House, posting that the redistribution of antibody treatments seeks reeks of partisan payback against states like Florida. More than 49,000 people have died from COVID. Citation needed, please. Since the pandemic first hit in March of 2020, the Delta surge over the summer led to more than 9,600 deaths in August. Citation needed, please. And more than 818,000 new infections. I think you know where we're going with this. According to weekly reports from the State Department of Health. The Santa spokesperson, Christina Pusha, told Politico that Florida health officials told the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services on Monday that the state would need at least 36,000 doses of the antibody cocktails for the state's 25 treatment sites, not counting the locations where it's offered privately statewide in an email sent to HHS on Tuesday, which Pusha provided a copy. Federal officials told the state to expect about 30,000 doses. So yeah, I mean, this does, I, I could see where they're coming from. 
where this reeks of partisan punishment of a state that has been a thorn in Biden's side since he came into office. And somebody who is poss probably going to run against him, depending on, or Kamala, depending on what the health status is of, of Biden. And like I've said, I don't know, if, if Biden drops dead of a fucking aneurysm, I don't know if Trump can run and win. Because he will be the same age as Biden was when he first took office. I think that's going to be a wrench to that, and I think that's going to lead to DeSantis, which means that we're going to get new pen and a phone mandates, just like Obama. I don't need Congress. I have a pen and a phone. Change the accent. And 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 put a little put, 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 put a little 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 stutter in it, and there's no difference between DeSantis and Obama. All right. Uh, let's listen to, let's listen to the House Plant Chief, actually, for just a little bit. The data shows that the overwhelming majority of Americans agree with my proposal. <clears throat> that's, that's no surprise, given that 76% of American adults have already gotten a lead. Okay. Back up. I was going to get up and you know, deal with my allergies for just a second again. But just as I was getting ready to get up, I mean, there he is, the face of the government. And I, I think he's in an empty room. I think he'd have to be in an empty room at this point. But no mask and cough. Did he cough into his hand again like he always does? The data shows that the overwhelming majority of Americans agree with my proposal. <clears throat> that elbow, dude, elbow. That's That's what you've been preaching everybody. Wash your hands and, and cough in your elbow. Uh, 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 uh. No mask, no nothing. That's, that's no surprise, given that 76% of American adults have already gotten at least one shot. But, but we're facing a lot of pushback, especially from some of the Republican governors. The governors of Florida and Texas are doing everything they can to undermine the life-saving requirements that I propose. And some of the same governors attacking me are in states with the strictest vaccine mandates for children attending school in the entire country. For example, in Mississippi, children are required to be vaccinated against measles, mumps, rubella, chickenpox, hepatitis B, polio, tetanus, and more. These are state requirements. But in the midst of a pandemic that has already taken over 660,000 lives, I propose requirement for COVID vaccines, and the governor of that state calls it, quote, a tyrannical type move, a tyrannical type move. This is the worst kind of politics, because it's putting the lives of citizens of their states, especially children, at risk. And I refuse to give in to it. These policies are what the science tells us we need to do. They're going to save lives. They're going to save lives, man. I, I promise. I, I promise, man. Uh, the tyrannical, the, the tyrannical, uh, uh, what's my line? God damn it. It is tyrannical. And to be honest, the vaccine mandates the state imposes are tyrannical too. But they're at a local level, so you have to go back and see the people who made the law in the grocery store, the, the people who are keeping the law perpetuated at this point. You have to see them in the grocery store, and if you don't agree with them, you can see you could look to these people and say, Hey, hey Bill, what the fuck? Seriously? But if you get close to a congressperson, it's an insurrection! Do you see it yet? I don't think he said it was from one state alone because that's, that's the number they're trying to, to peddle to the American people. If you go by the statistic, uh, statistics that CNN puts forward, it's actually over, closer to 760,000, but we won't talk about that. And I still don't believe that number either. I don't believe any of these numbers. All right, let's keep going. From Insider, 24 Republicans, state attorneys general, signed a letter calling Biden's vaccine mandate illegal. Because it is. Um, 
from Taylor Simone Mitchell. All but two of the Republican state attorneys general signed a seven-page letter demanding that the Biden admin modify the vaccine mandate part of President Biden's COVID-19 strategy or they will take legal action against it. The letter, which was addressed to the president on September 16th, read, We thus urge you to reconsider your unlawful and harmful plan and allow people to make their own decisions. If your admin does not alter its course, the undersigned state attorneys general will seek every available legal option to hold you accountable and uphold the rule of law. Attorneys General from Alabama, Florida, and Mississippi, New Hampshire, Texas, Utah are among the 24 who signed the letter. Biden's path out of the pandemic is a six-part approach toward driving the COVID-19 pandemic, which includes in part the vaccine, uh, vaccine mandate for employers with more than 100 employees, federal workers and contractors, and healthcare workers at hospitals that accept Medicare and Medicaid. Private sector employees who choose not to get the COVID-19 vaccine will be subjected to weekly testing. You want to bet? The letter calls the plan disastrous and counterproductive and says the dangers of the coronavirus don't demand an OSHA emergency mandate. Mr. President, your vaccination mandate represents not only a threat to individual liberty, but a public health disaster that will displace vulnerable workers and exacerbate a nationwide hospital staffing crisis with severe consequences for all Americans, the letter reads. The attorneys general predicted that it will result in at least some Americans quitting their jobs instead, putting a strain on companies, the labor market, and all employees regardless of their vaccination status. According to the New York Times, a former newspaper, the daily average of positive cases as of September 15th is 152,605, the daily average of hospitalizations is 98,449, and the daily average of deaths is approximately 1,943. Also, according to the Times, an estimated 666,816 people have died from COVID-19 in the U.S. so far, and 54% of Americans are fully vaccinated. Citation needed, please, because they've edited that number down 100,000 from their own numbers. So, citation needed, please. We, we've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin, Biden said while announcing his latest strategy to rein in the pandemic. And your refusal has cost all of us. So, good. Push back. Push back. Um, just if you are wondering what kind of companies are making these, this has nothing to do with COVID or the vaccine, but because it's Pfizer, I wanted to read this uh, briefly with you guys. Pfizer expands smoking drug Chantix Recall from Lucas Manfredi. Pfizer has expanded a voluntary recall of its anti-smoking treatment Chantix covering all Lots of the drugs, 0.5 and 1 milligram tablets. The affected products were distributed nationwide to wholesalers and distribu uh, distributors in the United States, U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico between May of 2019 and September of 2021. The drugs recall, which was first is uh, issued in July, is due to the presence of nitrosamine called n nitroso -vericline, which has been found to be at or above the FDA administration's interim acceptable intake limit. Most consumers are exposed to nitrosamines to some degree, with the chemical being common in water and foods, including cured and grilled meats, dairy products, and vegetables. Long-term ingestion of n nitroso nicline may be associated with a theoretical potential increased cancer risk in humans, but there's no immediate risk to patients taking this medication, Pfizer said in its recall notice. Wholesalers and distributors with an existing inventory of Shantix tablets are urged to stop the use and distribution of the drug and quarantine the products immediately. So interestingly enough, the Fox News article doesn't talk about what the actual effect is that this n nitroso vernicline is in the article, but it says it in the headline, the recall is due to the presence of nitrosamine and nitroso which may be linked to cancer. So you stop your smoking because you're worried that you might get cancer and you use a drug to help you stop your smoking that might give you 
cancer. And this is the same company that's behind one of the vaccines that's being widely distributed and often touted as one of the most effective. Thought you guys would enjoy that. All right. Um, from Ron Filipkowski, uh, Madison Cawthorn decided that he needed to go and talk because, well, he talks at great length, whether you want him to or not. Let's listen to Madison. We should be encouraging them to reject this. This is a medical apartheid, plain and simple. There's over 100 million Americans who are not vaccinated. I think it's even more than that. Uh, and if they want to start shutting down tra air travel for these people to get around the country, I think that's actually a constitutional violation because you actually have a constitutionally protected right to free, unrestricted travel within the United States of America. And I genuinely believe that what's going on right now is that all that's going to happen if United Airlines and American Airlines and Delta even, yeah. if they decide to start requiring vaccine mandates, let me tell you, I'm very confident there will be another air carrier that will come to the yeah. field and patriots like myself and you will give them all of our business. Which, I mean, that's the way it should be. If, you know, if, if, if the free market doesn't give you the product that you want in a way that you want it, then go back and make that product in a way that you want to distribute it. But yes, patriots like Madison Cawthorn should be out in the private market, in the, in the private marketplace of ideas, and making competitors to these places that feel that they need to tell you what it is that you, what you can and cannot be vaccinated with before you get on their airplane. However, as far as this goes, yes, you have free unrestricted travel between states. This is true. That's constitutional. But just like the healthcare argument, you do not have the right to somebody else's labor. You don't. You don't have the right to somebody else's product and you don't have the right to somebody else's labor. Now, if you pay them a bunch of money and they still refuse to give you service or you offer to pay them a bunch of money and they refuse to give you service, they are, what's the word for that? Stupid. They are stupid. But no, you don't have a right to anybody's product or service. Whether it comes to healthcare or whether it comes to air travel. That is a private company that is distributing the air travel. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks that there's no competitor to them. And we need to work harder on that and getting a competitor to them. But an airplane costs a lot of fucking money. And then you still have to get around FAA travel restrictions. But that we actually need to look at for the FAA and the travel restrictions that go along with that. The FAA... Um, the TSA, stuff like that, because that needs to be looked into. But as far as the airlines doing it, no, if you don't like it, build a better airline and let everybody come back on it. And wait for the left tards to come and protest you. Because they will, in great numbers, whether you want them to or not. And if you don't like it, drive to the next state instead. All right, what else do we have here? Ah, from the Post Millennial, which once again, we don't usually use because they're not green check verified, but I bore repeating, rather, from the Post Millennial. Watch, Nicki Minaj fans protest CDC headquarters in Atlanta. Um, do I have an author on this one? It's from James Anthony, there we go. Where's the music? Why is it so quiet in here? All right, there we go. Now we got it back. Controversial American rapper Nicki Minaj expressed her COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in a series of tweets on Thursday leading to protests by several of her supporters outside the CDC headquarters in Atlanta. We're here because the CDC has been lying for, to us for too long, said one protester or to a reporter on the ground. Minaj stood up and I am questioning this vaccine and we should all question the vaccine. 
Okay? When asked if he had seen Minaj's latest series of tweets, the man said, I've seen all of them. Boshi lied to me, the group could be heard chanting, among other similar slogans. Minaj first tweeted how the recent Met Gala wasn't worth her getting vaccinated, stating that she would get the vaccine once I feel I've done enough research and that she was working on that now. Minaj's Twitter account was suspended following the Twitter tirade. She asked the public, why y'all scared, why, what, what scared y'all so much ju to justify getting her dis account disabled? Minaj was praised by Tucker Carlson and Candace Owens. Well, I, I wouldn't want the, the latter of those two. While being slammed and derided by Joy Reid and Dr. or I'm sorry, and Saint Fau uh, Anthony Fauci, the patron saint of medicine, a public health official for her views on the vaccine. She told her followers on Instagram live to gather, adding, So you guys, if you haven't already, I, I, if you hadn't already heard, I've been suspended from Twitter. Twitter, Twitter. A spokesperson from the CDC stated, Throughout the pandemic, we've urged platforms, small and big, to take care in what they're conveying around the pinko pox vaccines because we know that information will be impactful on people's behavior. The same person then recommended not listening to people on social media if they don't have a medical background. Well, that takes care of half of Twitter. Minaj added, I'll never go back to Twitter because that's how it's starting to feel a little scary, given her vaccine hesitancy. What? I, I, I mean, good on her. But what what universe are we in that Nicki Minaj is, is on the side of reason? I, I don't understand what this timeline is. Why we're here? What happened? I like it, but I don't understand. Did, did we go into a time warp somewhere? Did I do a jump to the left and then a step to the right? What's happening in this world? I'm scared. I'm scared. Ah, uh, from our friends in Australia. Brian Nichols tweets out, do you get it yet? Quoting a screenshot from Twitter, uh, original poster, who all posters have been censored off of this. Good, because we don't need to dox anybody. Has anyone crossed from NSW to Vic recently? My son and I are stuck in NSW, and we don't know if we'll be able to get back. We are going to be out of resources soon. I can't keep living in motels. For the first time, I'm scared we can't get home. Person two, I think that was a chick actually, now that I look closer at the picture. Person two, at Victoria Police, this person is contemplating crossing the border from NSW to Victoria illegally. Yes, yes, be, be a good little Nazi citizen. Go tell the neighbors that you, uh, are, are you hiding your John vaccinated? Are, are you hiding them in the attic? Are, are they in your basement? Well, you're unvaccinated. Oh. We know you ask people who, who don't believe in, in the Pinko Pox. We, we don't have, we have a special camp for those, a special summer camp for those people. Thank you, Brian. Uh, from The Blaze, this is one that I've uh, been trying to get to for the past couple days and I haven't been able to. Fuck Joe Biden. College football fans express displeasures with the Biden admin. From Blaze TV staff. In this clip, is this just a video? And am I going to have to listen to Steven Crowder to do this? Because we might skip this if we have to listen to Steven Crowder. Because I can't stand him. Uh, I guess let's figure out what's going on. In this clip, Steven Crowder highlighted a new trend happening at college football games in the south and greater southeast region of the U.S. Over the weekend, Auburn was one of multiple college football games where fans could be heard chanting, Fuck Joe Biden. Let's uh let's go look. Over the weekend there was a uh, Evander Holyfield uh, Vitor Belfort fight which uh ah. whoever sanctioned this should be lined up and shot. <laughs> Donald Trump was there commentating. We had his son right. on the show if you want to see last Thursday. Yeah. And uh, the crowd was seen chanting and this is not a political rally. This was no. a fight night. Right. Right? This could e this could easily be just a random sampling of the country chanting, we love Trump.
uh, followed by a chant about the most popular president yeah. in history, 80 million votes, Joe Biden. This happened organically. Special warriors. We're still going strong. Of course, it's on Crowder's show, so they won't. They had. They have to bleep it out. Fuck you. That's great. That's great. Well, it's a great honor. And thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, very much. We love our country. I love our country. Thank you very much. Here's another patriotic chant that's uh, been making the round at college football games. And here's the thing: at multiple games. Yeah. Around it's almost as it's almost it's like a movement. It's like uh, it's like uh, owling or planking or the ice bucket yeah. challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Only they chant this. <laughs> I love college football. It's hilarious. <laughs> I might have to start watching college ball at that point. And I, I've never really got into college ball, but I, I might have to if, if that's what they're going to do. If they're going to be super based like that. I apologize for making your ears bleed by listening to fucking Crowder. Let's keep going. Uh, some more video. I don't even know why I turned the music back up. Um, uh, from Twitter, Clay Travis tweets out, White man kicks out black family of New York restaurant for not having vaccine papers. Patrons cheer. This is where we are. So you're refusing to serve us? Are you refusing to serve us? So you, so you're going to enforce segregation because we just told you that we're religiously exempt. You told us you had your vaccination. I never told you any of that. I, I would never tell you that. I would never say that. I would never say that. You have to leave. You don't have to leave. I, if you have the flyer, you have the flyer that you're supposed to put into your your window, right? Okay. Go and read it. Go and read it. Go and read it, and, and you tell me we're not leaving. Well, I'm not leaving. You guys can leave. I'm not leaving. <laughs> Did we, we just we just marched for this. Every, everybody in here is okay with that. Everybody's in here okay. With, with, with setting up, setting segregation in society? Everybody's okay with that? Oh, we don't have our vaccine card, so now the kids can't eat. We can't eat. You guys are okay with that? This is the America you want to live in? Is this the America you want to live in? No, fuck you. You see? You're not American. That's why you need to get the fuck out of here if you're not American. All right? Get the fuck out of here. Okay? This is America, and in America, everybody can eat. Everybody can eat in America, all right? This is not segregation. This is America. You need to wake up. This is the kind of country you want to live in? You want to live in this type of country? Wow. Everybody's okay with this? And they didn't ask other people for their vaccination. Good for you, but some people over here were not. No, that's, that's not the point. That's not the point. That's not the point. I told you, I told you that we're religiously exempt. If you read the poster that you posted on your thing from the city, it says you cannot discriminate, okay? Read the poster, it says it on there. So I didn't get the cheers, but even still, I mean, uh, the black family is getting kicked out of a, a restaurant for not having ha having your papers. Now, once again, private business, but there is the the extent of the private business that's doing the bid uh, the bidding of the federal government that worries me because that's where we go down to fascism. That that's what fascism is. But these kids don't seem to get this. They just think that fascism is whatever Donald Trump is. All right. What else do we got? What else do we have? Uh, Matt Rosendale turned heads yesterday. Today I learned that 75 refugees from Afghanistan will be arriving in Montana. I strongly oppose the resettlement of those Afghan nationals in Montana. Holy shit, did he piss off a lot of people. Let's see. 
what the numbers are at right now. So let's go down to the next one so we can see. Ratio, like you wouldn't believe. 14.1 thousand comments, most of which are angry, and 3.6 thousand likes. And he goes on to say, following the Biden admins disastrously mismanaged withdrawal from Afghanistan, I warned that we could not use this admin's incompetence to justify flooding our communities with unvetted refugees. The traditional vetting process for those individuals is a 14th procedure that takes well over a year. The mass evacuation of 100,000 Afghan nationals in a matter of weeks has made proper vetting these individuals near impossible. At this time, it appears extremely unlikely the Biden admin is properly vetted the Afghan nationals being resettled in Montana. And this is actually where he, he does make a little bit of sense. I've advocated that we should try to settle these individuals in other countries around Afghanistan that share their values and culture, especially if we cannot ensure proper vetting. And he goes on just a little bit more after that, but uh, the Great Falls Tribune has a little bit to say about this. Rosendale opposed to Afghan refugee resettlement in Montana from Nicole Girton. Montana U.S. Rep. Matt Rosendale tweeted Tuesday afternoon that he opposed a resettlement of Montana of Afghan refugees who fled the Taliban, the Taliban, takeover of Afghanistan. 75 refugees will be coming to the state as the first group of 37,000 arrivals is coming to the U.S. according to reporting from the Associated Press on Wednesday. Rosendale, Montana's sole representatives in the U.S. House, said he doesn't feel the refugees were properly vetted and that he advocated the U.S. should settle these individuals in other countries around Afghanistan that share their values and cultures. They should. That's why we have a th safe third country agreement with many of these countries, not just Mexico, but, you know, Guatemala, Qatar. And I said right off the right from the beginning, what did I say? Why don't we just do the safe third country thing and let these people stay in Qatar? Qatar is looking for people like crazy. They need and want people over there. Plus, their values are much, much better shared by the Qatari people. Their climate is shared. They're, they're closer to home. They're closer to family, other family in the Middle East. Qatar is a majority Muslim country. It seems like it'd be a no-brainer to go settle people in Qatar. Because they're taking the refugees on a temporary status, why not let them stay there? Where they know the terrain, where they know the people, where they know the language. Uh, let's see. The Wall Street Journal reported on Wednesday that countries in the Middle East Europe, Africa, and Latin America have agreed to at least temporarily house some Afghans. While they complete U.S. visa process and accompany security vetting, the details of the agreements are not yet clear. Well, and there are other people that are pissed at the volume off of this. Like, Montana is a massive state, and it only has about a million people all across. I think it's like 980,000. All across this massive northern state. It takes like 14 hours to drive across Montana by itself. From what I understand, I've never tried it, but it takes I'm, it takes a big amount of time to go across that state. And they're only taking 75 people in the sparsely populated state. Now, we're looking at almost 10,000 here in my state. And I'm looking forward to the falafel stands, I'm not going to lie. I am looking forward to that. I love Middle Eastern food. Middle Eastern food is amazing. But, once again, we're looking at the situation now where... You know, it almost seems like a setup because we've got all these good old boys surrounding the Air Force Base, or I'm sorry, the Army Base, not Air Force Base, the Army Base is just surrounded by all these country of good old boys and these people are bringing in child brides. Not to mention the trafficking that's possibly going on or reported to be going on because it looks like some of these marriages were forced into existence to get more kids on the refugee list. This is just a mess, the way that they're doing this. But it is what it is. All right. Ah, let's listen to Sarah Silverman. I don't think we're going to get through everything again today because we're running up on the clock and I got to read your live chat yet. But we got to listen to this one here. And I have thoughts on this. And a lot of you guys are not going to like my thoughts on this. 
I can tell you right now that a lot of you guys are not going to like my thoughts on this. Because I've heard the, heard the conversation. I've already read the conversations in, in the live chat. I mean, this may be a negative thought, but Holy shit. or maybe a positive one. I don't know. But if people aren't getting along, uh, like in relationship, they break up, you know? So, like, why don't we just finally just realize that this these states aren't working and, like, divide up into, like, two or three countries of, like, USA 1 and USA 2. And they can be USA 1. Like, the conservatives can be USA 1 because they love being number one and that it means something to them. And I'd love to have that be theirs. They can be USA 1, we'll be USA 2, and we'll be allies. And you'll come over... Here and we'll go over there and, you know, when you come to certain – many times when you go to a different country, you have to get a vaccine. That's that. By the end of the question, by the end of my answer, I have no idea what the question was. I don't think I'm anywhere near it. Click on the link in my bio to subscribe. No, shut the fuck up. I'm not, I, I'm not listening to that voice. I can barely stand to listen to that voice when I watch Wreck-It Ralph. In spite of the fact that, yes, I will admit that character is funny and enjoyable. But that voice, man, that voice. And I like Sarah Silverman, too, by the way. Like, her comedy is funny. It's just, you have to hear it in that voice. Um, as far as this goes, this is not going to be a popular opinion among the live chatters, but you're in my channel, so I'm going to tell you what I think about this. Peaceable divorce, A, is not going to happen, and B, if you want a peaceable divorce, you're kind of a pussy. Because there isn't going to be a peaceful divorce, and the people in the leftoid states are not going to accept a peaceful divorce. Once they realize how quickly they can be all cut off from resources. Now, yes, you'll hear the people on the left, Whoa, California pays all these taxes and they're paying all this welfare to all these farmers to cover up for the subsidized food prices that, the, that are driving farmers into the poorhouse. We will ignore that for just a second. That's more government intervention that um, that nobody on the left will come back out and talk about. But that that's just it. That's all that they have to offer is tax revenue. Never mind the fact that California is six hundred million dollars. I'm sorry, billion dollars in debt, not million. Six hundred billion dollars in debt to the federal government, with all the financial aid that they have going on with that. That even if there's a peaceful divorce, that they're they're not going to fucking pay. It's not going to happen. But with the exception of large swaths of Northern California, where the people are probably going to walk away from if there is the national divorce, as if they keep saying, they have no food production. And, of course, they're going to run their countries into socialist shitholes without any food production in them, because most of the food production is here in flyover country. And, by the way, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat that the farmers in Wisconsin are not going to let Madison dictate if we go to USA 2, so-called. But what happens to USA 2 if USA 1, so-called, dams off the Colorado? And suddenly that, that, that nice big, we're, we're so happy, we're so excited about the fact that we have farmers in Northern California. You have no source of fresh water outside the Colorado River. And some asshole looked up and said, oh, well, it'll be the same thing when we dam off the Mississippi. Checkmate. You better check your navigable waterways around the rest of the country. Yes, the Mississippi is the biggest, but you will flood out St. Paul and Minneapolis, which means you will flood out the major population center, or one of the major population centers of your so-called USA 2, if you dam off the Mississippi. We don't have so much of a problem with that with the Colorado. There, there is some issue with that, of course, but it's not as big of an issue if you dam off the Colorado to a trickle. And your food production is gone. Yes, no, you have all this pretty money that you throw around and say that you're giving to welfare to all these states that provide food back to you, but you can't grow food. And then we go out to the point on top of this that as soon as they start to realize that the socialist policies are failing, they run out and say it's a CIA op from USA 1 to come out and try to choke them out to make sure that they all die in spite of the fact that they have a shipping port. And they can run out and run to every other country to go get supplies, but they have no money because they spent it all on social programs. And then they go back to war to try and take back USA 1. If you really believe in your values, stay and fight for them. 
Stay and teach people the way. This is the way, as the Mandalorian says. Don't let them go away and win. Don't let them go run away and try to take all your resources and all your land with, with you. And defend the people in the states that you think would break off, because the large majority of them are not blue leftoids. Now, yes, a California Republican is very different from a Texas Republican. I understand that. But the majority of them are not blue leftoids that are going to look to see all their paychecks uh, um, appropriated in order to dis uh, distribute out to all the actors who felt that they wanted to leave a Midwest state to run in a long-running production of the Cheesecake Factory. Stay and fight. This is your country, too. These are your values, too. The values are freedom. And there are people in these states that are depending on you to get up, to get on the microphone, to get in the live chats and teach people the ways of liberty, not the ways of just let them go off and be tyr tyrannical elsewhere. Stay and fight. This is yours. These are your values. Teach them to others. So, with that, that's what we see off of that. And do we have time for one more, I think? Let's do two more, because there is one that, there are two that I want to get to today. This one and this one. We got time for two more. Let's do two more. I'm actually going to move this up to the top so we don't get confused. So when I go pick up these last six, then we can do them back on Monday. But let's do these last two here. Um, from 23WIFR, four people found slain in an abandoned SUV in Wisconsin. And there's the Dunn County Sheriff, by the way. And I don't live in that region of the country any or in the region of the state anymore, but um, this is not very far from where I grew up. I don't know where the field is. I'm hoping they tell me an idea of where it is. No, it's 30 miles northwest of Eau Claire, so this is actually quite a distance from me. So no, I have no idea where this is, but... If it's 30 miles northwest of Eau Claire, then that's at least two hours away from where I grew up. Anyway, I didn't realize Dunn County was that big. Whatever, we're off topic. Um, from Amy Winters, Jimmy Casca, and Gray News staff. Law enforcement officials said a homicide investigation is underway after four people were found dead Sunday in rural Wisconsin. A Dunn County Sheriff's Office representative said the bodies were found in an abandoned black SUV in a cornfield near the town of Sheridan Town Hall. WEAU reported a 911 caller alerted deputies to the vehicle. The Dunn County Sheriff's Office said Tuesday that the four victims were 35-year-old Loyes Foreman III, 26-year-old Matthew, Matthew Isaiah Pettis, and 30-year-old Jasmine Christine Sturm, all of St. Paul, Minnesota, and 30-year-old Natosha Lee Flug Presley of Stillwater. A preliminary autopsy report says all four people died from gunshot wounds. Our hearts go out to the family and friends of these victims, said Kevin Bigged, Dunn County Sheriff. I wish we could release more details of our investigation, but we have to balance the public's desire to know the details with running the risk of harming our investigation and losing evidence for building a good homicide case. The Sheriff's Office said a second dark colored SUV may have been involved. No arrests have been made as of Tuesday morning. If anybody has information on a black SUV with Minnesota plates in the area Sunday or any other related information, contact the Sheriff's Office at 715-232-1348. And I have no problem giving that number out because that is directly to a government agency that is investigating this, not going to a private citizen. A lot of things that are going on with this. Um, victims are all, well, they're, they're a range of ages. I don't know if how, if they knew each other at this point. It looks like there might be, and I don't know. We're, we're just looking at names right now. Loyes Foreman III looks like possibly um, an African-American name with the Loyes on there. I don't know if that's what it is or not. Um, and Natosha Lee Flug Presley sounds fairly Asian. And then Matthew Isaiah Pettis and Jasmine Christine Sturm, those could go any direction. Those could be any, any names, any kind of ethnicity that go along with that. 
But I mean, from there, I mean, two 30 year olds, a 26 year old and a 35 year old, no question. None of them have the same last name. Um, and Stillwater, I think that's really close to St. Paul. Yeah, it's like a half an hour away. Oh, that's right. I do know where that is. Okay, I, I didn't think about that at first, but I do know where that is because that, that does make this a little bit more interesting as we look at this. So this is St. Paul. And I'm not going to show you where I grew up, but it's quite a distance away from here. But this is St. Paul. Um, then you have to come back out here to go up here all the way to Stillwater, which is on the state line. And I believe there is a bridge that crosses. Okay, maybe not right there, but there is a bridge that crosses not too far from. Yep, um, State uh, Trunk Highway 64. So 35 going on to 36 going into Minnesota. So yeah, that's where you come into Wisconsin. And if I remember my, because they don't have county lines on here. If I remember my current county lines, Correctly, this is all still Dunn County up to here. So, yeah, this is about the area that they all died in, too, or were at least found. I don't know where they died. I don't know if they were in the front seat or the back seat. I don't know if one of the people was set up to be the driver. None of these details are, are given at this point, but, yeah, they were... Apparently, somebody came out of St. Paul, came into Stillwater, maybe picked up the fourth one, and then crossed the border over there. This is interesting. I am my my interest has peaked on this. So now I have a lot more questions that go along with this. Huh? Who knew? I think they were all the way over in here, though, if I remember correctly. Where does the article say they were? Sheridan Town Hall, let's have a look. Sheridan Town Hall. Okay, so that's over, that's a small township um, over by County Road Triple V. Okay, so they did, it, you're still on kind of the same route there because you're taking 64 east. But yeah, you're not too far off from a route that would have gone from St. Paul into Wisconsin and then still a ways in. So now I'm curious, now I'm interested, now I have more questions. None of which will be answered by looking into this article because it's still developing, but now, now my interest has peaked. All right, let's do one more here. And then we will do live chat and head out of here for the day. All right, uh, from the Dissociated Press, search on for Florida woman missing from a uh, cross country road trip. A Florida woman, Florida woman, who vanished while on a nomadic cross country trip in a converted camper van with her boyfriend is the subject of a nationwide search while authorities labeled him Wednesday as a person of interest for her disappearance. Investigators say Gabrielle Gabby Petito, 22, was last in contact with her family in late August when the couple was visiting Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park. Much of their trip was documented on social media accounts that abruptly ceased. The boyfriend, Brian Laundry, returned to their Florida home in 2012. Uh, in her, I'm sorry, in her 2012 white Ford Transit van on September 1st, 10 days before Petito's family reported her missing. According to the police in the Gulf Coast town of Northport, the van has been, been impounded by investigators and processed for clues. Laundry has not cooperated with police and is now considered a person of interest in the case. Northport police said he has not been charged with any crime. The FBI and Suffolk County Police Department in New York are assisting with the investigation. We're pleading with anyone, including Brian, to share information with us on the whereabouts in the past few weeks, the Northport Police Chief Todd Garrison said in a statement on Wednesday. 
The lack of information from Brian is hindering the investigation. The answer will eventually come out. An attorney for the Laundry family, Steve Bertolono, uh, Bertolino rather, of New York, said in an email Wednesday that the family is remaining in the background as the search continues and will have no further comment. In my experience, intimate partners are often the first person law enforcement focuses their attention on. In cases like this, and the warning that any statement made will be used against you is true, regardless of whether my client had anything to do with Miss Petito's disappearance. As such, any advice or on the advice of the counsel, Mr. Laundry is not speaking on this matter. Bertolino said. Well, here's the reality. The woman's been missing since August, middle of August. You got home unscathed, unharmed, in the van that the both of you drove out, drove out that direction. And now you won't talk to the cops, which you shouldn't anyway. I'm, I'm not, de not denouncing it for not talking to the cops because you shouldn't be doing that shit. But you come home in the van unscathed without your girlfriend who's been missing for three weeks. Yeah, I, I, you'd be the first person I would think of too because you're the last person she was seen with. And if she ran off with some guy who's a bigger fucking Chad than you, I'd be forthcoming and tell people that. Now, and I don't know if he, if he offed her at this point. I don't know if he killed her. I don't know if she did run off with some other Chad. I don't think he'd be so uncooperative. Or if they got into a fight and he just left her behind. And now she's trying to make her way out in the, in the Grand Teton somewhere. Which I can't imagine she hasn't been found yet if she's out there. Trying to survive and subsist on like a tent. And some berries and shit for three weeks because they got in a fight and he just got into the van and stormed off and went back home. I don't know what, what's happening with this. I can go with my gut on this, but there's still an active investigation off there and I'm not gonna blackpill anybody off of this, but you know, like I said, you, you come home unscathed in the van that the two of you went out west with a few days after the last time a video feed shows up Something's fishy, yo. Something's fishy. All right. And that's it. That's all that I have here for the news. We will get on with these last five. We will do those over on Monday, probably. But let's do some live chat, shall we? First and foremost, we will come over here. We'll dock this over here for you guys to see what you guys are doing. And we will do the chat from the week. Starting with on Monday, we had Quest Fanning, Spartan, 0000, zero, zero, zero Superior 1, R Volt, Katie Z, MK Ultra, Ron Helton, Sully Blue showed up. I haven't seen Sully for a few days though. Somebody go check on Sully, make sure he's safe. I've seen him play his violin on Instagram recently, so I know he's safe. Uh, Random Randy was here, plus we had Trump never lost 2020, except Trump did lose and Biden is the most popular president in history. Honk, honk, wink, wink. Don't ban me, Susan. On Tuesday, we had Ron Helton. Random Randy, the chill anarchist, was with us. Quest Fanning was here. R. Volt. Katie Zed, Chillaga 1984. Harvey McLeod showed up here. And MK Ultra. On Wednesday, Wednesday, we have Brave Dave, who sent more messages on Wednesday than the rest of you guys combined. 63 messages that day. Brave Dave. He was so brave. Until he got muted. Because he said stupid shit. We also had Random Randy. Shilaga1984. Ron Helton. Arvolt. Nephilim Ninja of Nibiru. Katie Zed. Ben Wild. And Quest Fanning. And by the way... We shouldn't be taking the words of Bob Woodward at face value any more than we should be taking the words of any journalist at face value. But, but Bob Woodward has never been accused of lying before. Well, he runs the Washington Post. Yesterday, we had Random Randy, Quest Fanning, Ben Wild, Arvold, uh, sorry, 80s Kid, K. 
Katie Z, Chilaga, 1984, Newman Leary. That's a new name I haven't seen in here. On uh, Quest Fanning. Uh, throughout the week, we also had, let's go back over to the Twitch monitor here. Tankless1177 has followed, but has not done much commenting. So thank you for coming in and hanging out with us, Tankless1177. We got a nice big follow crew coming in from a. Uh, uh, Stephen Ingramus, plus we have Unicycle Man has donated an ice cream today, and Jan Widduba has also followed today, so thank you guys for that. You guys all rock. Let's see what we've got going on up here. Let's see how much you guys have shifted the chat here from the beginning. So we missed some of the messages right at the beginning here, almost 25 minutes of messaging because we started at 7.45. But we'll start this morning with Ron Helton, who says, my computer frequently freezes on Twitch. I have the rare fortune of being able to run Trobo and Uboob simultaneously this morning. Yeah, we, we've got some we've got some Ron Helton in here. So the spice shall flow. Quest Fanning is here under his Eric Bowman pseudonym. She'll log in 1984. Welcome on in. Randy Crush Saga, who is Random Randy, says, so the far-right groups are saying not to go to the far-right group rally, and that's a conspiracy theory. Yes. Yes, it is. Ben Wilde is in the motherfucking house. Ron Helton says, who called for the rally in the first place? That would be a fired at Trump staffer called for the rally in the first place. Ron Helton says, at his right, go protest to your state government and make them pressure the corrupt feds to release the people who have been falsely imprisoned. Yes. Do you see the FB FAA is now banning the airspace above that bridge? You know, safety, not propaganda. Yep, we talked about that. Everyone, please, please pay close attention to where these COVID patients are dying. Hospitals, germ-filled hospitals that don't give a damn about their patients. Just that sweet federal money. They just need to replay the old video and assure, uh, assert us it's the same. Hospitals are gross. Wow, imagine that. An FAA restriction without explanation. Thank you, Ben Wild. Waiting to be apprehended. That wouldn't be so if they got a decent fine or present time. Yep. You know it's when they're sitting in line to be apprehended for illegally crossing the border. Um, Quest, I'm not familiar with what this means. Let's put them... Oh, let's put them to work. 13th Amendment loophole style like Kamala did in California. Okay, now, I, now I'm caught up. Now I understand what that means. Eh, I'm not as big of a fan of that either. Um, it's because they used everything they had to get here. They are broke. Blame Biden and his BS comments when they took office. You said that you can ask for permission. I'm sure they won't just give access to the leftist, or I'm sure they won't give access to the leftist media. Uh, California, Texas, and Oklahoma are the three states who will be receiving the bulk of the Afghan refugees. Not sure why they picked my state. Well, they're going to get 100,000 or 10,000 of them here, too, so. Mmm, Spartan, that might be too spicy for YouTube. Uh, let's see, really Fox has deep pockets, fly three times as many drones, to hell with this corrupt government. The people have the right to know suppressing the media is illegal. The camera on the drone is probably the most expensive thing. Yeah, that's probably going to be the part that takes the fucking 45 too. Dumb people like to fly up studio cameras rather than very high level onboard cameras. Just wait until the order is explained sufficiently before complying. National security means the the security for the government and the interest it protects, not the security for the people. They can't explain it sufficiently. They just they're just embarrassed because they caused the crisis at the beginning when they said that U.S. is open to refugees. Oh, Quest says I'm not saying God hated Haiti, but I'm not denying it. Uh, Z Powell wants to know if we want to become famous. Um, should we go to BigFollows.com? Ron says, I don't think God hates Haiti, but it's factual to say the U.S. has meddled there since the Haitians declared independence from France. We can go to randyfollows.com. 
I say we blame Canada for the illegal southern border crossings. I know many Haitians, three of them are smart, two of which are nice, I consider friends. The others are actively reinforcing unsavory stereotypes. They make Ferengi look sophisticated. Can't blame them much. The French killed off the smart, uh, most of the smart ones they could. Arvold says, if you want really big follows, go to the southern border and tell them you have green cards for sale. That would be hilarious to get them to all make accounts and follow your social media. Well, I think you're onto something here. Well, if you have family members who catch this coup, treat it seriously. Go to a private doctor with success in treating the coup. And don't go to these corrupt hospitals unless you don't care. Multiple people in my family have been tested for active infection or antibodies with no one returning a positive result. I guess we don't happen to have that particular RNA chain in our DNA. Uh, Arbold says, I understand triage, so rationing happens. If they allow doctors to prescribe alternative therapies, we wouldn't need so much Regeneron. I can't say the alternative ther therapies on air. Some of this I can't say on air either, by the way. Everyone needs to watch the Jimmy Dore interview with Robert Malone, the inventor of the mRNA vaccine. It's the real science. Yeah, I'll look into that, uh, the one you put in the, in the Discord. They're gonna buy some money guns for the office party. Pharma bucks. Ron Held says, yeah, Biden will make sure Florida gets none of the drugs or at least a, a reduced amount. Regeneron is still considered like nanobots or something like that, right? I have no idea. I'm currently running at 1.8 megabits per second today. Usually it's 1.2 or less. My ISP sucks. Windstream is garbage. 1.8. I checked into the Musk satellite service, over 500 bucks for the electronics and over 100 bucks per month. That's too pricey. But Elon, don't you want to support Elon? Imagine how nice it must be to live a life so ignorant that you can believe the facts works and the cases are up. Arvold says, eh, he just cleared his throat, but Democrats are all about rules for the, yep. I have hairy legs, Joe dumbass. Biden has spoken. Nobody should listen to that jackass. <laughs> Did he say there were uh, 600,000 dead from Corona AIDS in one state alone? No, I think he just said the whole country. The FDA still lists the jab as experimental. Joe bumbling Biden forgot to mention that important fact. No, it is FDA approved. Remember? They made a big deal about it. It's okay, Ron, they don't follow the usual verification process, uh, procedures that have resulted in hundreds of drug recalls, so no need to worry. Uh, Randy Crush says, it's ridiculous they're even allowed to sell it after their settlement in 2010-ish. I didn't know about that. Finally, they're recalling that drug. I remember a story that Conan O'Brien told several years ago. One of his guys was taking that crap and wigged out, went to a neighbor's house, was pounding on the door and got shot dead. Gun control. Or you kill yourself because it's a depression drug that just happens to help a lot of people not feel like smoking. Unvaxxed air. Good luck with that because the FAA controls who gets to operate an airline. They will insist that you need the holy jab to fly. I think if we pool all our money, we can get an airline. Dude, how fucking boss would that be? Just have an airplane. Remember those temporary FAA restrictions? See how it all makes sense? Yep. Uh, 80s Kid says, I think I might go to the local police station and ask them to put out a bolo for the flu. It's vanished, not been seen since December of 2019. Um, 80s Kid, aren't you English? I would not recommend that. 
with the way your police officers are over there. I do think that that would lead you to have billy club bruises by the end of that. It's funny, don't get me wrong, but I would not recommend that. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. Randy Crush says, instead of two guys in a truck, we'll call it minus two shots in a plane. Uh, Arvold says the Democrats must be shooting themselves, seeing all the minorities not falling in line. Uh, quarterly reminder, the TSA has apprehended zero terrorists since inception. Ben Wild says, when Nicki Minaj does more for American citizens and freedom than Kamala Harris, what a world we live in. Just watch the movie Idiocracy. I've seen pieces of that movie. I've never seen the whole thing from beginning to end, but I think I've seen the whole thing in pieces. Twitter, we didn't suspend her. Also, Twitter, well, we kind of did. Twitter, we need mental health checks on our users. Also, Twitter, welcome to the shit show. That is an accurate quote. Fossey be like, shut up asking questions. Just take the facts and keep lining my pockets. Be sure to use a fountain. What are we using a fountain pen for, by the way? That's pretty good, Arvold. You should make that into a meme so I can post on Instagram. Oh, Arvold, if you're going to hide from the code, please be sure to take a diary with you. You know, just in case. Oh! Oh, I can't believe I just read that out loud. Oh! You guys are sneaky. Oh! <laughs> Um, but I do keep a fountain pen here, by the way. I only use fountain pen. Unless I have to draw on those little bags that hold little parts. I have to write a part number on those. I use ballpoint for that because the fountain pen does not dry on that. Oh my god, I can't believe I just read that. Uh, follow me on platforms other than YouTube, folks. Just in case. Go Vols, says Katie Zed. And suddenly I'm a sports ball fan. My sister and niece were at that Vols game. Nice. I'm not leaving, isn't that Steven's line? Good to see him healthy. A group of mostly white people responded yes, and a black man asked if y'all were good with segregation. Also based. This is the ace card of the unvaxxed. So a lot of people, black folks don't want it. The dude has a legit lawsuit now. Yeah, he does. I love this video. Excellent. Well done to that guy. I bet they won't show this on CNN. Probably not. Oklahoma's getting about eight, 1,800 of those Afghans. Oh, wow. Gearing up to roast Ed. Yeah. National divorce, no. Fight for it because if they do, you know, if they do nationally divorce, eventually it'll be just like with habeas corpus in the Civil War. The federal government, which is probably going to wind up being USA 2, is going to come back after those sweet, sweet resources in USA 1. You're not going to get away from them. As much as you want to, there is no net peaceful divorce. There's so many rivers around here just saying. The dollar was worth four cents on the dollar in 2001. Now there are four times as many dollars in circulation, which makes it about one cent or less. Isn't necessarily a thing you achieve. Ed needs to move south. You have no winter down in the south, though, you guys. I need a winter. Texas and Oklahoma will survive just fine without the damn Yankees. Harvey McLeod is here. Howdy y'all, speaking of Texas and Oklahoma. <laughs> Maybe van life isn't so great after all. Ron Helton says her fiance is a loon. I think they suspect him in the death of the lesbian married couple now. I think she's dead and she knew that he killed those lesbians. I don't know about the lesbians. 
No, she did not run off with another dude. I strongly suspect she is a material witness in the murder of those two lesbians. Something's fishy about the vanished woman, like her body in the river, fishy. The two lesbians were last seen in the bar in Moab. Those two were found arguing in the same city. I'm sure it was about the two lesbians. So, was there a foursome that was trying to happen, or... What, what's going on? I don't know about the lesbians. Ron Helton should make a market of generic. Regeneron. There you go. Does Canfield have any legs? I doubt they're hairy either way. I saw a U777 go for $9 million the other day. Let's go buy one. Brave Dave came back. Hi, Brave Dave. Nicki Minaj is misinformed. Her concerns about her boyfriend's brother's cousin's ball say a lot about how misinformed she is. All right. And, well, that's all we got here today. So, let's switch up the track and let's get out of here. Where's my outro music? There's my outro music. All right, so what a great week, you guys. We had a lot of cool stuff happen. A lot of cool things go on with this. This has been uh, uh, quite the week here. And if you guys like what you see, you know, you see the donate links in the chat or in the description. So toss me a couple bucks. If you like what you see, you'd like to see this continue. We are going on to check out my friend, Stephen Ignoramus. Brave Dave. He's not on Twitch, but I'm sure that they would love to bring you with him. Uh, with, if you guys want to go over and check out Stephen Ignoramus, get him a link to the DLive or the YouTube for that. We're going to go over and check that out. We're going to go hang out with him. That's going to be a great time. Otherwise, I'm probably going to do some gaming. I think tomorrow we'll do some Fallout 3. So come back and join for a little bit of that. That's going to be a lot of fun. A little bit more live chat during the uh, the gaming session than, uh, than we're going to do otherwise. So go and check that out. Otherwise, we'll be back here on Monday for more Contemporary. We will see you guys then. And until then, I am Jay Edgar, and this is Contemporary. Take care.